Hello everybody, welcome back. So a very interesting case today and I actually never found this before and I never thought this was even possible. Uh, let's start by um, showing you this video that I received from the customer let's say about uh, almost six months ago when they wanted to install the heater. So as you can see when they disconnect the electronic uh, plug the harness water comes out from the heater from the electrical connections now this is uh, really interesting because i have no idea how how that is even possible so after six months total silence since then and now they send me the heater to check it i asked them did you ever start the heater they say uh, no but we want you to check it first okay my from what I know, probably they wanted to start the heater, but it's not working anymore or something is happening. So anyway, um, after seeing this, we got the heater and uh, I didn't even connect it to the, to the power because uh, it, was, it was moist all over these connectors. Yeah, and even maybe you can see now there is still some oxidation there. Yeah. It's interesting what kind of antifreeze they are using because it's all dried out and uh, I know here in the workshop if I drop a little bit of antifreeze on the floor it will be there for months so I don't know what this is. Anyway, so uh, what's the first conclusion? Somehow from the heat exchanger water is getting inside the electronics because this is the most uh, <laughs> logical answer no okay so i took everything apart yeah we take a look at look at the heat exchanger everything is perfect not a crack nothing no marks of antifreeze nothing okay so what's happening then take a look at the burner everything is brand new not even fired up once everything is clean everything is perfect good then here on the bottom of the burner we can see a little bit of mark and uh, the conclusion this is antifreeze because here in the intake we can see and this is the admission of the burn burner air yeah for burning i'm sorry about this flicker i don't know why this is happening probably because of my lights here so we had a puddle of antifreeze here yeah and now we are thinking was the first conclusion something cracked here and the antifreeze got here but we saw that this is perfect so the heat exchanger is perfect inside outside the burner is perfect and actually even if this was cracked and the antifreeze was uh, coming out it would come through this gasket and it would come to the exhaust, not here. So uh, it's not possible to get here. Okay, then we go a little bit further in this part. And uh, yeah, then we think about it that somehow the antifreeze came to the electronics. But inside there is no communication between these two parts. And actually we took out the electronics just to see the damage of it. It's really hard to take out. It has all these clips around and you need about 10,000 screwdrivers to pry all these uh, clips. And also here there is a bracket. Yeah, this one. Which is also with a gasket and it has some kind of tor torx like screws but they are not torques i had to hammer in uh, 27 mil torques for it to work yeah so uh, it's not like it this shouldn't be opened anyway but it's properly sealed all around we take out the electronics yeah here we have a gasket and yeah the electronics is damaged you can see oxidation rust and if everything so this is gone anyway this is a spare part as a whole 
normally you cannot buy just the PCB and we take a look inside here and what's interesting there is absolutely no hole no communication whatsoever with the other side of the heater so we come to the conclusion that uh, there is only way one way for antifreeze to get in and this is just through these uh, connections okay but then we come to the question how how does how how is this possible because everything is sealed the connector is just fine it has the original rubber seal it has everything all the holes are sealed so we think about something like this and even if we find here this puddle then the logical answer is the heater was placed like this on the floor maybe and somebody um, just spilled antifreeze on it and it got into the connections and into the air intake yeah because we do not think about anything else at this point good so I called the customer they said they never did that they don't did not spill nobody uh, nobody did anything so uh, they just up uh, ended up with antifreeze inside here another thing that I thought of is uh, that the hose from here did, got disconnected antifreeze spilled all over the heater it was not connected yet electrically or nothing else was connected and they came with compressed air blew down the antifreeze and somehow forced it inside the, the disconnector yeah but then again they say they never did that it never happened so on okay so after all of this i send all my findings to our colleagues in germany and they say send us the pump all right and then uh, this was really interesting because the customer called and they say they have a system where they have a second water pump and they asked me if uh, they really need to use this one and I said yeah well you have really no choice because once this is connected right here on the heater yeah and secondly if it's not connected ele electrically with the plug yes then the heater will throw out error codes and they will say the, the water pump is uh, in open circuit, yeah? Good. So what the customer did, and I told them it's, it's really no problem to have two water pumps on the circuit, as long as they are in the same uh, cir circulating water in the same direction, yeah? It's no problem. But what they, what they did is uh, somehow fantastic. So they opened up the water pump and took down this pellet yeah and mounted everything back on not to have uh, two pumps in the circuit or i i really don't know why so anyway um, they want want to rely on only on the other pump for circulation and they took out this pellet from the front of the pump connected everything back together yeah they try to start the heater at that point but i don't know how much time the heater set like this with uh, the pump connected and uh, this piece taken out so what happened is uh, when they did this you can see this pump has this o-ring here and it's really finely put together uh, let me just fix the phone now because we are done all right so we have the water pump here, yes? And it had this soaring, of course, the cap, it's not important. So, when they opened the pump, they also took out this rotor. Yeah, and you can see by what was in it, on it, these are uh, debris from the circuit, some kind of metal debris, because they are all here on this magnet so i'm not even sure if this was taken out at or not we know only about the pellet and probably there are two two ways because what happened water 
got inside the pump into the part where there should be no water yeah so it went behind the seal or in another way got here into the PCB of the pump and of course this one is also defective now and uh, here is antifreeze all inside so there are two possibilities one behind this o-ring and the other one and I didn't check as uh, metal debris get trapped inside here the rotor is rotating and it will eat away from the plastic and then again we have from the inside another way so water can get here into the PCB okay so this is part one we said yeah you damaged the pump what can you do this is it we will give you another pump give you of course not for free because this cannot be a warranty if they open the pump and even so we can see uh, the debris on this magnet and this is clearly no warranty because the circuit needs to be clean okay so what happened they connected the harness to the pump and probably left it like this overnight or whatever and all the water and this is the interesting part which I, I I find so hard to believe so because we had two bars of pressure uh, here is a seal on the connector if you can see it and all the water coming out it started to migrate on the wires and uh, both are sealed here also on the ECU there are some seals in this connector where the the cable is going from the pump so you can see from outside it is sealed but what actually happened here and uh, this really really blew my mind because I I didn't thought this was possible or at least until now so let me try to draw it I'm not good at drawings but maybe it is uh, it will be a little bit clearer so let's say we have here the terminal and we will do it like this just the terminal from the whichever connector this metal part right here yeah, a terminal like this and as you can see on the terminal we have a rubber plug a, a seal whatever so let's say this is the rubber seal this is the let's say this is the copper wire and here is the terminal let's do the terminal just like this so at this point where it's uh, it's fixed to the cable we have a direct connection with a copper so this is the copper this is the seal and this is the outside let's say of the cable yeah and here are the copper wires inside and this is the insulation yeah so this is the insulation and this is the copper wires so what happened when uh, when the water started esca escaping behind the connector it went inside these terminals inside these seals and through the copper wires it went yeah into the ECU just like that with the same principle here is the seal yeah here inside we have the insulation here is the copper wire and here we have the terminal yeah just like that connected directly to the copper so this is what happened actually so all the water went through the copper wires and into the ECU so this is why from outside we could not see anything and this just blew my mind so this for me was something I I, I never thought it would happen so we have insulation insulation we have um, these rubber seals we have everything sealed up together and you end up getting antifreeze through the copper wire and then of course this was also connected in the same place and imagine look how long this is uh, and uh, 
it came it came all back into the burning chamber inside the wires for the glow plugs yeah it came here and that made that puddle below the burner probably if it had been another type of antifreeze we could see here some marks but we cannot see oh maybe 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 here maybe here there's a little bit of green i'm not sure you can see it on the camera because it's just a remaining crystal from the antifreeze so guys yeah what do you think about it it's been a while since uh, this heater surprised me but this time this time uh, this time I really got surprised yeah so this is it thank you for watching and uh, what can I say maybe you have some cases like this and you just cannot find the source of moisture this is what uh, also can happen okay guys thank you very much We'll see you on the next one.